Hey everyone, you are listening to 10 Minute Scriptures. This is Tim with the Word of Life Church. Hope everyone is blessed, walking in the will of God, saved. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 9, and I was going to start a little further down, but I wanted to back up. Actually, just start at verse 1 because it's Scripture, it's the Word of God, it's all good. Amen. <laughs> so, Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. And he entered into a ship, being the Lord Jesus, and passed over. And came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, very important, right? Amen. Faith, we've got to have faith. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It says, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. You remember that day that your sins were forgiven you? And through by grace, through faith, we can still have our sins forgiven. Maybe the first time, maybe sometimes when we stumble and fall, that we can still have our sins forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. As we grow in the Lord and the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding of His will and everything, hallelujah, the more we can walk in the beauty of holiness even though that grace and forgiveness is still there, and we strive for the perfecting of the saints, we know that that grace is still there. Not to use that as a cushion, because he says this is at one point, and if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So said, Thy sins be forgiven thee. He said, And behold, certain of the scribes, of course, they were always hanging around, right? The scribes, the Pharisees and everything, always hanging around, looking the same way they do to you these days, to us, to Christians. Once you identify yourself as a Christian, walking in the will of God, saying that you're supposed to be Christ-like, right? Walking uprightly before God. You're branded right then. People keep an eye on you. Listen to what you say. Look for an opening to try to trap you in. They do that. People do that. Said and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemy, blasphemeth. Uh oh. You better be careful. We talk about blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Won't be forgiven in this life or the next to come. People, you better be careful. But in verse 4 it said, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore thank ye evil in your hearts? <laughs> he read their mail, didn't he? Oh, boy. He said in verse 5, For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. In verse 6, Oh, wonderful scripture. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. Can you imagine being there and seeing that? Uh, one of the multitude of miracles that Jesus did when he was alive and walking this place. This earth, you know, it said at one point of that in the book of John, if you know that the books, you know, the world couldn't contain the books if it were written of all the things that the Lord Jesus did while he was upon this planet. Whew. Really makes you wonder, really, it really sparks that thought and that imagination as to what all wasn't even recorded. I mean, it, it is enough what we have. Don't get me wrong, but just imagine. It just, it's, you know, it sparks that curiosity. But what we have is enough to get us to heaven, to get us home. But it said in verse 8, it said, but when the multitude saw it, they marveled. Well, who would? <laughs> and glorified God. There again. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Seeing a miracle like that. Would glorify God too, wouldn't you? Amen. Hallelujah. I would. 
glorify God, seeing a miracle like that, seeing the man of God saying, take out thy bed or be healed, you know, some laying hands, you know, on someone and praying to God that they be healed and they're healed like that, you know, not any, any, anything that the man did. All he did was just lay hands on it. It was the power of God working through them, being a willing vessel. And it's the power of the Holy Ghost working through them. Power of God. And they are healed. You know, Jesus said greater things we would do because he had to go to his Father. But he sent back another comforter, the Holy Ghost, which is still available to us. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, and he glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed, passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. <laughs> Matthew was one of the members of the uh, IRS of the day, <laughs> the, the, the tax people. And he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass and because this is kind of the crooks of what I was going to get across here. It said, And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And you know, I don't see where it says that Jesus and the disciples got up and left because the publicans and sinners came down and sat with him. Do you? When you read it? I don't I don't see that. Because it's not there. But in verse 11 it says, And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with the publicans and sinners? Seemed to me they had a little bit of that churchianity and a little bit of that religious spirit, don't you, that some people have today. You know, some, one scripture it talks about when a person comes in with the goodly apparel. You show them to the very front part of the church and give them the best seats and the best positions but the person with the not so goodly apparel you put them in the very back not in the not so good position in the not so grand position in, in the body in the back well if you're saved walking in the will of God you know we're all on the same level but the scribes and the Pharisees didn't see it that way but see the Lord Jesus that look on the outward appearance. Sure, when we get saved, we know we, we clean up. You know, he cleans us up from the inside out. Amen. And we're to dress respectable. I know that. You know that. Ladies, you dress respect. Men, you dress respectable when you come to the house of God when you're out in public. Because that is what we do to show the world. Amen. About who we are about being Christ-like, showing that we are truly born again. He said, but when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. See, they that are in sin, they that have no way out, they have tried everything else in this world. Tried every other scientific method even. Every other religious method. Have found no other way to eternal life. There's only one way. Jesus was speaking of himself right here. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. Soon to be crucified and placed in that borrowed tomb and resurrected on that third and appointed day. And now when we feel drawn of his spirit, and we must be drawn of his spirit to an altar of repentance, and sorry for our sins and call upon him to save us and to come into our heart, take up abode there and ask his forgiveness for sins. That's what we must do to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for this scripture. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. This has been 
10 minute scriptures with Tim from the Word of Life Church. Church, if I can talk, thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord and uh, take care. God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you. Take care and we will see you next time. Bye now.